Let me ask you a question today. Which is easier, for God to forgive your sins or heal your body? Tune into today's broadcast. You'll find out the answer. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Welcome to today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. My name is Greg Moore. We're in the middle of a series called Knowing Jesus. Uh, do you know the Lord? Have you, have you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior? Is he, is, do you know that you're born again? Do you know that you have a home in heaven? Praise God, that's where it all starts. Just encourage you, open your heart to Jesus today, and He is the answer. Jesus is the answer to every problem in your life. And if you'll yield to Him and turn your life over to Him, He will f- make things uh, brand new for you. He will uh, cause things to work out for you. He will direct you. He will lead you. He will bless you. He will help you. Man, knowing Jesus is the best thing that I've ever done in my life is accept Him. And then secondly, just going on to know Him. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 that I may know Him after 30 years of walking with the Lord, he, he said, here's the number one goal of my life is, is knowing Jesus. And so that's what we're uh, talking about in this series. That's what we're helping you to do. If you'll seek the Lord and, and seek His kingdom and seek His righteousness, everything else that you've been seeking will be added to you. It all comes in one package with Jesus. Praise God. That is, that is, that is so powerful. So I uh, want to tell you a funny. These are some old age funnies. So a reporter was interviewing a 104-year-old woman and asked, what do you think is the best thing about being 104? The reporter asked. She simply replied, no peer pressure. Wow. The nice thing about being senile is you can hide your own Easter eggs. <laughs> That's funny. I've sure gotten old. I've had two two bypass surgeries, a hip replacement, new knees, fought prostate cancer and diabetes. I'm half blind. Can't hear anything quieter than a jet engine. Take 40 different medications that make me dizzy, winded, and subject to blackouts. I've got bouts with dementia, have poor circulation, hardly feel my hands and feet anymore, can't remember if I'm 89 or 98. I've lost all my friends, but thank God I still have my driver's license. (laughs) Oh, man. I feel like my body has gotten totally out of shape, so I got my doctor's permission to join a fitness club and start exercising. I decided to take an aerobics class for seniors. I bent, twisted, gyrated, jumped up and down, and uh, perspired for an hour. (laughs) But by the time I got my leotards on, the class was over. (laughs) Praise God. Well, thank you, Jesus, that we have the healing power of God working for us, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today is uh, Jesus uh, is our healer. This is the thing we need to know. He is a healer. Acts 10 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. In Exodus chapter 15, one of the names of the Lord In verse 26, and he said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And when he says he'll put none of these diseases on us, that literally means he'll turn off 
sickness and disease in our lives. And he said, I am the Lord who heals you. One of the Lord's names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. He, he is a healer. Uh, man, he, he is the healer of the, uh, also the healer of the brokenhearted. And we see in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed or bruised, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. But notice it said, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Jesus is the healer of the brokenhearted. Jesus is a healer. He healed all who came to him. In Matthew chapter 4, in verse 23, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in her synagogues, preaching uh, the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease among the people. Jesus is a healer. In Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you're going to know Jesus intimately, you have to know him as a healer, my brother and sister. He is a healer. He, he, he went out. He went out, and he taught. It says here in 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 Matthew four twenty three, uh, he taught, he preached, and he healed. He taught, he preached, and he healed. And there was you can find no record of anyone coming to Jesus in in the Gospels that didn't receive healing. Jesus is a present day healer. And we need to know him as a healer. We need to know him as the healer. And man, uh, he wants you well. He, he desires you to be well. He desires sickness and disease to leave your body. In fact, he desires it so much. He took stripes on his back. Isaiah 53, uh, 4 and 5 talks about how he, uh, he, he took stripes on his back. Uh, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. You're, you, the, the stripes Jesus took on his back brought healing uh, for our physical bodies. He's a, Jesus is a healer. L listen, our, God created man, and he created our bodies to heal. I mean, if you go uh, cut, uh, so, you know, something that's not living, it's not going to heal automatically. But there can be a cut in, in, in our bodies, and God has created our bodies to heal, for our blood to coagulate and for that wound to be healed. Uh, the way God created our bodies, he created them to heal. He created an immune system in our body to fight disease, to fight sickness. Uh, why would anybody not believe that God wants us well? He, he created our bodies to heal. Uh, you know, doctors and nurses and medicine and, and the medical field, all that they do, uh, they've just discovered how the body responds to, uh, to certain uh, physical attacks of disease and sickness and pain, and and then they they all they do is discover different things uh, that will help facilitate the healing that God initiated in our bodies. Man, this is this is just a, a no brainer to know that God wants us well. You know, if you didn't, if you don't think God uh, wants healing in your body, why? Would you even go to the doctor? Why would you even go to the doctor to get well if it wasn't the will of God for you to be well? In, in Luke chapter 5, we read there in, in chapter 4, but you, you, you go over to uh, Luke chapter 5, and, the, and when Jesus cleansed the leper, in verse 12, and it happened when he was in a certain city that, behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, 
you can make me clean. This is really an assault against Jesus' character. He said, if you're willing, I know you can. I just don't know if you will. But then Jesus put out his hand and he touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. I'm willing. And when Jesus said that, he's expressing, Jesus is the expressed image of the Father. And he said, I'm willing. God's willing. I want you healed. And not only that, it immediately it says the leprosy left him. And man, and he was healed. Praise God. And then you, you can go on down and see about the man uh, when he was when he was teaching, Jesus was teaching in a house. And the power of the Lord in Luke 5, verse 17, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And then men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed. They, they couldn't get into the house because so many people were in the house. And so they, when they couldn't find a way, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling in the midst before Jesus. Man, that was a lot of work. Going up on the roof, removing the tiling, letting the guy down. And it, and it took faith on the part of the guy that was paralyzed to, uh, to let them do that. And when he saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and Pharisees begin to reason, saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning that which is in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk? Now, that's the question I want to ask you today, my brother and sister. Which one's easier? Which one's easier to tell someone, Your sins are forgiven you, or to be healed, rise and walk? In, in that day and time, they thought it was easier for Jesus to heal. Uh, in this day and time, we would, we would say it'd be easier for Jesus to forgive our sin. But the, the, the correct answer to this question that Jesus asked, which one's easier to, to say your sins are forgiven you or to say uh, rise up and walk? In other words, which one's easier to release uh, a person from the penalty of his sin or to release that person from the bondage of sickness? Which one is easier? The true answer to that is neither one because the same sacrifice paid the price for both. Jesus, on the cross, took stripes on his back, took thorns in his head, uh, took our sins uh, in his in, in his spirit and he became sin for us that we might be made righteous he became sick for us that we might be well uh, he became oppressed for us that we might be live live in peace he took all of that guys and and it was all of the same sacrifice that paid for our forgiveness of sins paid for our healing and we need to know jesus is the healer and because of that he said as the Father has sent me, so send I you. So you can release healing to other people. Now look, what would happen if someone that you've been praying for came to your house and said, you know, I'd like to get saved. And I'd li I, you've been talking about the Lord to me, and I, I'm ready. I want to get saved. But now this, this person that came to you, they were a bad dude or maybe a bad dudette. They've been doing bad stuff, and they came, and you, you knew their past. You knew, I mean, man, uh, the, maybe they were in prison for what, they, what they'd done. They really had done some bad things. But you, do you doubt that Jesus would forgive that person no matter what they've done? If they came to Jesus and they really wanted to be saved, would you have any doubt in your mind? that that person could be saved. No. In fact, you'll lead them in a prayer that their sins are forgiven and they're washed white as snow. You'll believe that they're, uh, you know, they're, cru they're crucified with Christ and, and He lives in them and, 
and that the, they're a new person in Christ and the old man has passed away and all things have become new. You'll, you'll tell them that he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. And you, you'll give them the word and you'll believe that their sins are forgiven. You have no problem believing that. Why? What makes you what what gives you the basis to believe that 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 person, that bad person who've done done a lot of bad things could receive uh, forgiveness of sins and could become righteous because the sacrifice has already been made and the price for the penalty of that sin has already been paid. Jesus did that for us. Well, then, what's the difference between that and and you have a neighbor you've been talking to, you know, about that God wants people well, and and they come to you and they say, well, you know, I I really I really want to receive healing, but I just don't know, uh, I just don't know if whether God will heal me or not. And and they want you to pray, but they're praying. Uh, they want you to do their praying for them, and 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 they want they want you to do their believing for them. It's like they're coming to God for their healing, like they're going to the lo- a loan officer for an unsecured loan. And my brother and sister, listen to me. Uh, what was the basis upon which you led that person to the Lord? That same person can receive healing on the same basis on the sacrifice that Jesus paid. You didn't you didn't you didn't have any doubt that person that person would receive forgiveness of sins. Why are you doubting or why are you allowing that person to doubt that the Lord would heal them when he Jesus paid the price for it already? That's the basis. Which one is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you or by his stripes you're healed. You go free from that sickness and disease. Neither one, because the same sacrifice paid the price equally for our forgiveness of sins and also for uh, our, the for uh, healing in our body. And God has done that for you. He, he He did that for you. He's He's a healer, and He's your healer. Praise God. And you have to believe uh, Romans 8 and verse, verse 32. Romans, Romans 8 and verse 32 is a powerful, uh, powerful verse that, that tells us that no matter what has happened, if you believe on Jesus, not only did he forgive us our sins, but everything else that we desire um, also is included in that. And so... Verse 32 of Romans 8, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Man, Jesus has done it. Jesus has accomplished all of these things for us. Jesus has has died not only for our sins, but also for sickness and disease. Man, also for um, you know, a peace of mind uh, for uh, every every for, for financial need, everything that you you have. Look, if you can believe, uh, if you can believe that he didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely also give us all things? He 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 died, guys, to make us whole. He's a healer. If we can believe he's forgiven our sins and 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 the basis of that is what he did on the cross, we've got to believe that that same basis uh, what he the stripes he took on our on his back brought healing for us. and it it the same sacrifice paid for both. I want to share a story with you. It's called take take the son. A wealthy man and his son loved to collect rare works of art. They had everything in their collection from Picasso to Raphael. 
they would often sit together and admire the great works of art. When the Vietnam conflict broke out, the son went to war. He was a very courageous man, died in battle while rescuing another soldier. The father was notified and grieved deeply for his only son. About a month later, just before Christmas, there was a knock at the door. A young man stood at the door with a large package in his hands. He said, Sir, you don't know me, but I'm the soldier for whom your son gave his life. He, said, he saved many lives that day, and he was carrying me to safety when a bullet struck him in the heart, and he died instantly. He often talked about you and your love for art. He said, uh, he held out the package and he said, you know, I know this isn't much, but I'm, and I'm really not a great art artist, but I think your son would have wanted me to uh, give this to you. The father opened the package and it was a portrait of his son painted by the young man. He stared in awe at the way the soldier had captured the personality of his son in the painting. The father was so drawn to the eyes of his son that his own eyes welled up with tears. He thanked the young man and offered to pay him for the picture. He said, oh, no, sir. He said, I could never repay what your son did for me. It's a gift. The father hung the portrait over his mantle. Every time visitors came to his home, he took them to see the portrait of his son before he showed them any of the other great works he had collected. The man died a few months later. There was to be a great auction of his paintings. Many influential people gathered, excited over seeing the great paintings and having an opportunity to purchase one of them for their collection. On the platform sat the painting of the son. The auctioneer pounded his gavel. We'll start the bidding with the picture of the son. Who will bid for this picture? There was silence. Then a voice in the back of the room shouted, we want to see the famous painting. Skip this one. But the auctioneer persisted. Will somebody bid for this painting? Who will, who will start the bidding? $100, $200. Another voice angrily from the back said, We didn't come to see this painting. We want to see the Van Goghs and the Rembrandts. Get on with the real bids. But still the auctioneer continued. The sun, the sun. Who will take the sun? Finally, a voice came from the back of the room. It was the longtime gardener of the man and his son. He said, I'll give $10 for the painting. Being a poor man, it was all he could afford. We have $10. Who will bid 20 Give it to him for $10. Let's see the masters. The crowd became angry. They didn't want to wait for the, uh, they didn't want the picture of the son. They wanted the more worthy investments for their collections. The auctioneer pounded the, the gavel, going once, going twice, sold for $10. A man sitting on the second row shouted, now let's get on with the collection. The auctioneer laid down his gavel. He said, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, the auction is over. What about the paintings? I'm sorry, said the auctioneer. When I was called to conduct this auction, I was told of a secret stipulation in the will. I was not allowed to reveal that stipulation until this time. Only the painting of the sun would be auctioned. Whoever bought that painting would inherit the entire estate, including all the paintings. The man who took the sun gets everything. God, took, God gave his son 2,000 years ago to die on the cross for you and me. And much like the auctioneer, his message today is the son, the son. Who will take the son? Because you see, whoever takes the son gets everything else. It's a package deal. You get healing. You get prosperity. You get peace of mind. You get relational harmony. You get all the things that you need in life when you take the son. The Son, the Son, who will take the Son as you open your heart to Him today? 
and receive him. Make him Lord of your life. And more than that, make it, make it the pursuit of your life to know him. With him comes everything else that you need in life. And I trust that you've been blessed by this broadcast of Wisdom for Living. Uh, take the sun today. You won't regret it. God bless you. Discover 12 keys that will unlock healing in your life when you get Pastor Greg's book, Your Healing Door. Find hope and encouragement for you and those you love when you read this powerful book. Order your copy from gregmore.com today. Today's teaching, Knowing Jesus, is available in a 10-disc CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and 4K video. Go to gregmore.com and order your copy today. If you've enjoyed these broadcasts on knowing Jesus, I encourage you to invest in yourself. Go online, gregmore.com, and pick up a copy of this series, either by USB, a DVD, CD, uh, you can order it in any of those formats, and I know it'll be a blessing to you. In fact, uh, why don't you order? consider ordering one for someone else that you love? And I know they will be touched, they will be blessed, they will be helped and encouraged. And, and while you're on my website, check out all the uh, other resources I have there. I've got a lot of funnies on there, uh, wisdom quotes on there. i got my blog on there, a lot of, a lot of good things that you can check out. Go to gregmore.com and be blessed today. On our website, you'll find Greg's latest book release, free teachings, as well as many other resources. You'll be able to access his blogs, quotes of wisdom, and funnies of the week. While there, please connect with us and let us know how you or a loved one has been blessed by this ministry. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702, Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today. Join us again tomorrow for more Wisdom for Living. If I ever begin to get down, I start thinking about my eternal life. If the devil comes against me and throws stuff at me and or accuses me, I just remind him of his past. And, and had the, had the uh, prince of this world known, he wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Then I remind, remind him of his future, that if one angel is gonna grab you by the nap of the neck and put you in the lake of fire, and I'm gonna be living with the Lord forever. Praise God, man, that gives me joy. Too many times we focus on circumstances which can change up and down the, you know, some people would just get so bent out of shape if, if they get a bad report about one of their children or finances or something else. Man, we need, we need to rejoice. The, the light of the righteous rejoices. That's tomorrow on Wisdom for Living.